Today we will start Unit 1 on Frequency Domain Analysis for Signals. Today will just be a very basic introduction to what signals are, and then we will start the analysis. Lecture 1-1, Introduction to Signals. The objectives of today's lecture are to provide an overview of the course as well as continuous time signals and systems. A signal is a waveform that carries information as opposed to a waveform that carries power. Up to this point in your engineering career, you have been studying waveforms that carry power, such as in your circuits courses, a waveform that would carry voltage or current. Some examples of signals um, are radio waves, such as AM or FM, brain waves, which are EEG, speech, MPEG, JPEG, or seismic waves, like for earthquakes, the human voice, sign language, or Morse code. Power is usually carried by a constant or sinusoidal voltage source, like what you saw in AC and DC circuits, or currents. You examine this phenomenon in your courses, and these signals may be more irregular. Information is a variable signal. Signal. The more unpredictable, the more information it can send. For example, if you've ever listened to a fax machine, it sounds a lot like noise. But this high to low noise sound creates a high information rate. An irregular or random signal means that it may be difficult to find a formula that describes the waveform. Figure 1 shows an example of an irregular signal. Note that there's no set pattern and you cannot um, have a set period or anything like that. Compared to the following signal, which is an example of a signal that has a regular pattern, such as a triangle wave that would have a set period. A system is a device that takes a signal as an input and produces a signal as an output. A system may be as simple as a filter or as complex as a cell phone. The system could be a car, laptop, the human body, smartphone, etc. Figure 2 shows an example of a system block diagram. We will use this a lot in this course and you will also see it a lot in the follow-on course, Control Systems. This course does not discuss electricity very much, but rather the mathematical model to convert the signal through a system. The following model is an example of a system for a cell phone. Your voice creates this voice air pressure that goes into the cell phone that then goes through some kind of electronic system to produce a radio frequency signal to a cell phone tower. Now let's explore some of the connections between this course and some of the other courses in your curriculum. The starting with course that you had was ECE 205 Circuits and Systems, which I call a bridge course because it's a bridge between circuits and signals, so it's a mixture of both. You did a little bit of Laplace analysis of circuits in there, but you also did system properties in there to get you ready for 300. You're currently in 300 Continuous Time Signals and Systems. From there, you can go on to Linear Control Systems, ECE 420 Discrete Time Control Systems, and ECE 425 Mobile Robotics. I'm obviously biased because that's my branch. I teach control systems in mobile robotics, and Dr. Throne teaches EC420. Alternately, you could take the discrete time signal and systems route and take 380, which leads you to 483 DSP system design, 310 communication systems, or 481 electronic music synthesis. After communication systems, you could take software design radio, wireless systems, or fiber optic systems. ECE 300 focuses on the frequency domain approach to system modeling and analysis. 380 focuses on discrete time. Our primary tools in this course will be Fourier series and Fourier transforms. Application areas that we will discuss include filtering and sampling. Ultimately, we want to be able to design systems to act on signals in a certain way. And you apply a signal to a system, measure the output of the system, and analyze the signal to extract information and do processing to obtain other signals. Some examples of things that you could use the tools in this course for would be to remove noise from a telephone signal, enhance the bass in a music signal, sharpen a blurred image, change the frequency composition of an audio signal to radio frequencies, or compress a signal so that it can be stored economically. Common problems in signals and systems are noise and interference. Noise is the undesirable and undesirable random signal, whereas interference is an undesirable but non-random signal. The following figure is an example of a speech signal that uses air pressure and vibration of voice saying the word hello. 
This is a throat resonance and the peaks are when the vocal cords smash together. There are two different kinds of sounds that you can get from acoustic pressure. And normally the frequency is between 15 Hertz and 20 kilohertz. You can have a tonal or voice sound such as in this hello world, or you can have a non-tonal sound such as when you have the sound S, which is, which is not, does not include the vocal cord vibrations at all. So a tonal or voice sound, you would say would have a tone, a pitch, and a frequency, which is why you see this oscillatory behavior, whereas the sound S would sound look more like noise if you actually plotted that one out because there is no vocal cord vibration. So let's look at the system block diagram that would create this kind of model. First, you would have the acoustic pressure for the sound. And that is an input to the microphone. The output of that would be a continuous time voltage signal. And then that goes through some electronics. The electronics are used to process the voltage. And the output of that would go through an analog to digital converter. And this gives you digital or binary level numbers appropriate for a computer. And that goes into the computer memory. Then eventually you would open that up in some kind of software such as MATLAB in order to generate the figure above. And this concludes Lecture 1-1 and Introduction to Signals.